In the Light of the Moon also known as Ed Gain is a 2000 American horror film directed by Chuck Perello and written by Stephen Johnston. It is based on the crimes of Wisconsin murderer Ed Gain. Topic. Plot As a child, Wisconsinite Ed Gain is subjected to physical and psychological abuse at the hands of his religious fanatic mother, Augusta, and his alcoholic father, George. A year after his father dies, Ed goes out hunting with his older brother, Henry, and the two get into an argument over Henry wanting to leave home and Ed's devotion to Augusta. When Henry insults their mother, Ed flies into a rage and buttstrokes him, regaining his senses as Henry collapses, Ed panics and sets a fire, which Henry's accidental death is blamed on. Augusta later dies of a stroke, leaving Ed alone in their desolate Plainfield farm, which a despondent Ed allows to fall into a state of disrepair, with the exception of his mother's room, which Ed seals off. Living off of agricultural subsidies and the money that he makes from leasing land and babysitting neighborhood children, the increasingly unstable Ed spends his plentiful free time making nightly excursions into local cemeteries. Ed digs up the bodies of recently deceased elderly women, who he makes futile attempts at reviving before decorating parts of his home with pieces of them. The townspeople notice how perturbed Ed seems, but regard him as nothing more than a harmless eccentric with a morbid sense of humor and an obsession with graphic literature about crime, headhunting cannibal tribes, and Nazism. Ed begins suffering from hallucinations of Augusta, who he believes is contacting him from beyond the grave, commanding him to resurrect her and do the Lord's work by murdering sinful women. Ed's first victim is a local tavern owner, Mary Hogan, who he wounds with a handgun before bringing her to his home, where he leaves her bound to a bed. Days pass before Mary succumbs to her injury, at which point Ed mutilates and eats her remains, using what is left over to add to a female flesh suit that he has been constructing. Ed's delusions subsequently worsen, and he becomes convinced that Mary's death has brought back Augusta. A hallucination of Augusta eventually implores Ed to murder Colette Marshall, a hardware store owner who Ed had been unsuccessfully trying to woo. Ed reluctantly shoots Colette and transports her body to his house before having dinner with the Hills, a neighboring family who he surprises with venison steaks. Colette's employee, Brian, returns from a hunting trip and calls the police after finding the shop full of blood. Brian becomes convinced that Ed, whose behavior towards both Mary and Colette he had always found unnerving, is responsible for the women's disappearances. Brian rushes to Ed's home, where he unearths Colette's freshly decapitated and dressed out body. Wanting to avenge his friend's deaths, Brian tracks Ed down to the Hill residence, but is talked out of shooting him by Sheriff Stilwell, who arrests Ed. The film ends with a nonlinear montage that consists of officers uncovering evidence in Ed's home, interviews with Ed after he was placed in a psychiatric hospital, and scenes in which Ed tries to keep his urges in check through prayer and rituals, and others in which he exhumes corpses, only to rebury them after snapping out of a fugue state. An intertitle then states that Ed was buried next to his mother after dying of respiratory failure in 1984. <laughs> <laughs> Cast Steve Railsback as Ed Gain Austin James Peck as Ed Gain at 10 Ryan Thomas Brockington as Ed Gain at 16 Carrie Snodgrass as Augusta W. Gain Carol Mansell as Colette Marshall Sally Champlin as Mary Hogan Steve Blackwood as Brian Nancy Linehan Charles as Eleanor M. Adams Bill Cross as George Gain Jan Hogue as Irene Hill 
Brian Evers as Henry Gain Luke Rowland as Henry Gain at 14 Rick Simpson as Henry Gain at 20 Pat Skipper as Sheriff Jim Stilwell Craig Zimmerman as Pete Anderson Lee McLaughlin as Warren Hill Devin Alexander as Doris Wickstrom Ben Caswell as Officer David Bell Danny Keough as Hunter Topic. Release Topic. Home media Ed Gain was released on VHS by Millennium on July 24, 2001. The film was later released on DVD by First Look Home Entertainment on June 24 that same year, and later by Tartan Video on November 29. On April 22, 2003 it was re-released by First Look as a part of its three-disc box set, which included Dahmer, and Ted Bundy. Also that same day, it was also released as a single feature by Velocity Home Entertainment. It was last released in 2005 by both Prism and First Look on February 14, and August 26 respectively. Topic. Reception On Rotten Tomatoes, the film holds an approval rating of 10% based on 10 reviews, with a weighted average rating of 4.1,10. Neil Smith of the BBC called the film, gross and repellent, and awarded it a score of two-fifths, writing, Pirello's stated intention is to explore the psychology of his twisted protagonist, but the result has all the hallmarks of a low-budget exploitationer, right down to its B-movie lead Steve Railsback and Carrie Snodgrass. Would it be too much to expect some thought or consideration for Gaines' victims? Evidently so, given Hollywood's depressing habit of turning serial killers into cult heroes. While The Guardian's Philip French offered praise to Railsback's performance as Gain, he found the film itself to be a generally unsensational chunk of bizarre Americana that adds little to our understanding of the man. Fellow Guardian reviewer Peter Bradshaw had a similar response to the film, writing, Really, it's the same old pulpy, paranoid voyeuristic stuff, and Ed's fear and hatred of women is never that edifying. It's well acted, and effectively put together, but there is an insurmountable problem, gloomy, grave robbing, body chopping old Ed as, in the end, just a little bit of a bore. Variety's Robert Kohler gave the film a negative review, deriding the film as being both lackluster and a disappointingly mild recreation of true events. While Stephen T. Boltz of Pop Matters enjoyed Railsback's acting and the film's historical accuracy, he was critical of its occasional lapses into sensationalism and of its inconsistent characterization of gain, and ended his review of the picture with is Ed Gain an attempt to bring the true story to light? I can't say. Did it? Well, yes and no. It's really a moot point. The question I guess you have to ask yourself is this, are you watching for historical accuracy or for entertainment? Kevin Thomas of the Los Angeles Times afforded the film moderate praise, commending the performances, its atmosphere, and its historical accuracy, but went on to write, Ed Gain resists cheap humor in favor of moments that are inherently darkly comic, and tries for a seriousness of purpose, yet is at times awkward and under-inspired, creating a question as to whether so gloomy and repugnant a tale was worth telling simply for its own sake. Ain't It Cool News also praised Railsback's performance, and concluded. Ed Gain is not must-see but it's a lot better than I thought it would be.
I would recommend a rental to the curious horror or true crime fans out there looking for something sort of along the lines of Henry, portrait of a serial killer, but tamer, but at the same time a lot sicker. Nathan Rabin of the AV Club had a lukewarm reaction to the film, writing, Half character study, half exploitation film, Ed Gain is most effective when it focuses on Gain's halting attempts to connect with his neighbors, who treat him with the polite but decided distance of an adult dealing with a misbehaving but well-intentioned child. Where the film falters is in its attempts to explain away Gain's madness with a massive dose of pop psychology. Time Out found the film to be a surprisingly sober response to a potentially salacious subject, and wrote, As with the best scenes of Deranged, the conjunction of colorful case history, odd impulses, gallows humor, low-budget austerity and genuinely grotesque iconography produces a felicitous and engaging variant of American Gothic. Richard Gilliam from Allmovie felt that Pirello doesn't understand that credibility is not a substitute for style, but also commended the film's historical accuracy, and low-key approach to the material. <laughs> Topic. Awards Steve Railsback and Chuck Perello won Best Actor and Best Film, respectively, at the 2000 Sitges Film Festival, while Railsback and Sally Champlin won Best Actor and Best Actress, respectively, at the 2001 Fantafestival. Chuck Perello was also nominated for the International Fantasy Film Award at the 2001 Fantasporto, but lost to Alejandro González Iñárritu's Amores Peros.